I have no idea what, what kind of questions people will ask me at Google will have to kind of like estimate how many ping pong balls fit into a bus or like these weird <laughs> questions. And I, I spent way too much time, I guess, in, in the forums, helping people or trying to figure things out. And uh, so much is that there's just so many different parts of Google that you have no idea about. And uh, yeah. I, I think finding like-minded people is super important. And that's, yeah. that's sometimes that's that myth of is SEO dead? Uh, that comes up, I don't know, every year or every half year, because it's like, oh, now everything is SEO by default. Therefore, SEOs are obsolete. And that's definitely not the case. Today, I'm talking to John Mueller, somebody I'm sure you all recognize. Uh, John is the search advocate at Google. Now, as many of my other guests that I've been talking to um, have been very much instrumental at the beginning of establishing the SEO industry, John has not necessarily been instrumental at the beginning, but he has certainly been very influential over the past 10 years because of his time at Google. Um, but what I really want to talk about, John, is you know, everybody has a story. So today I'm going to be having a really great conversation that I'm very much looking forward to about how John came to where he is now and his background. So I'm going to start off by saying, John, what were you doing in the very early days? Cool. It's, it's great to be here. Uh, th thanks for setting this up. Uh, so, so happy to, to kind of join in. And I, I find these kind of background stories always really kind of fascinating. For, for my part, I, it, it wasn't really that I studied computer science or was some kind of a secret hacker, but I, I don't know. I, depending on how you define hacker, maybe. Uh, as, as a kid, I spent a lot of time on computers. I kind of taught myself how to program. Uh, in, in the early days, it, it was quite different than it is now in the sense that you couldn't just go look something up or you couldn't just go ask someone, I don't know, on social media, like, how do you do this thing? Um, because basically you weren't connected to anyone else. So you had to learn by trying things out, by copying what, what other people are doing, by, by books or magazines, where sometimes you would just like copy or re essentially like retype the code of some program and hope that you didn't have a typo in there because you didn't really understand what it was doing. And hopefully it would kind of work, which I don't know, is, is kind of surprising that people manage to go through that and still stick around, not be frustrated by everything, but it worked. Um, I, at some point I found uh, the, the whole dial-up bulletin board uh, things and that that I think was interesting because suddenly you could talk with other people online you weren't just alone with this magazine where you're trying to kind of like retype the code of some I don't know game um, I as, as a kid I I'm originally from Germany but I spent I think like almost 10 years in the U.S as a kid kind of growing up. And then towards the end, uh, or I guess like middle high school, uh, we, we moved to Switzerland as a family. So I came to Switzerland to, to finish high school and I ended up studying uh, mechanical engineering with a focus on robotics and business administration here in, in Switzerland. And robotics, I guess, is like almost the closest to search engines in the sense that there were physical crawlers that you were working with, uh, but uh, <laughs> it, it was it was kind of weird, I, I guess, at the time. But uh, it was fun. It, it's quite um, it's quite an interesting combination: robotics and business administration. You wouldn't necessarily think about putting the two of those together. It seems. I I don't know. Like we we had to do, pick something and. Uh, it, it was around that time where I was already working on, on my own software company. And oh, I see. Uh, because right. of that, kind of like, well, on the one hand, business administration felt a little bit more, I don't know, uh, practical in the sense that I could use some of that thing, some of that information. And also it felt like it would probably be easy because I had seen some of those things already, which, which I think both, both of those aspects were, were kind of helpful there in that like you study something, but it's like you don't really have to work really hard on it because it's not completely foreign to you. 
Although I think those two people have come to uh, search to SEO, we've either come from the computer science and the hacking background or more of a creative marketing, which I myself, I came from more the creative marketing. I mean, it takes both sides, I, especially for SEO, where I think there, there's a lot of technical stuff that's around there, but it's also kind of almost the, the creative side is, is becoming more and more important. And you yeah. can't really just do one or the other. Mm. Uh, so it's it's something where I I don't like I, I guess in the early days I almost felt like oh I need to encourage all SEOs to learn how to program, but you don't need to do that. Like it's there are lots of people that love doing programming that already do it, but like not everyone has to do it. So yeah, I think for me it's the perfect balance of geek and creative. I, I am a massive geek at heart, but I'm also very creative well. And it's just, you know, data, I love data and being able to combine that together, but also the constant learning, it's constantly evolving. I find that so exciting that, you know, that mental intellectual stimulation, although some days I feel like I'm absolutely exhausted. Um, yeah. So what, So you were saying that your first experiences on the internet, you um, were on dial-up, et cetera. I I think Can they were just like random local things where at, at least from from what I remember, like it's such a long time ago, uh, it's it's more that there there were these almost like local local boards that you could access for basically, I don't know, like a fixed fee or something like with a phone or something mm -hmm. like that, where it's not not a long distance phone call where you had to pay a lot of money. So it's like you you didn't. I don't know, pay too much to actually get access. And just like lo local people who have similar interests. And I, I think that was, that was pretty useful, kind of going from just being this weird outsider in, in your like real local environment to, to actually seeing, well, actually there are other people that have yeah. similar interests. Like-minded people, oh. It's, it's so great when you find like many people, isn't it? And then you don't feel so strange anymore. Yeah. Yeah. How did you progress into starting to experiment with search engine marketing? I know we sort of, all of our stories are quite similar in terms of, for a lot of us, you know, we were building sites and it was just learning how we, what we could do with those. Was that the same for you? Since, since I, I had a small software company here in, in Switzerland, and we, we were doing billing software, so something kind of like really boring, essentially, but it's, it's needed, I guess. Uh, and at some point, the, the, everything around the web just got a little bit more visible. So we, we also started making websites for clients and making our own websites. And uh, from there, it, it kind of spiraled I guess out of control almost in the sense that you you try things out and some of them work some of them don't work um, I I ended up um, make, making various test sites to try things out for myself with regards to SEO in, in general to figure out like what what actually is is working here because at least in the early days or at least for me uh, it, it was a lot of thinking that well, uh, Google is figuring out what my, my what my site is about, and it's doing this in some magical way that I can't figure out uh, by myself, and I don't even know what, what I could do to kind of make it clear to to Google, and it almost felt like it wasn't a technical thing that Google was doing, but more it's like it's kind of like trying to figure out where your site fits in with the rest of the world. And uh, kind of progressing from there to understanding, well, actually, there's a lot of technical stuff that just happens behind the scenes. And it's not that much magic. It's a lot more actual like practical step by step things. And uh, that, I, I think, was, was pretty insightful. And uh, from there, I, I think like going to the forums and helping other people try to figure things out and asking questions myself and seeing that so many other people are struggling with regards to SEO questions as well. Uh, that, that kind of, I don't know, pulled me in, in, in that uh, like there's, there's so many things that you could do around SEO. And actually some people are seeing some really good results based on something Kind of purposeful that they're doing it's not so much that google is accidentally recognizing your site it's more that you're 
Like someone is doing something purposeful and Google is recognizing that too and showing that. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I, I think especially in the old days, you know, everybody, it was a case of they were feeling their way. I mean, it's not like it is now. There's so much documentation and there's so much great documentation from Google, obviously. But back then it really was, it was a really nice feeling of camaraderie and people were helping each other out. Sorry, I'm actually gonna be really cheeky here. And I've just got one question I have to ask you. It just came to my mind. <laughs> Did you do anything spammy before you joined Google? Did you actually, were there any techniques that you used? Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think, I, 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 like, I, I don't know, like, all, all of the, the things that, that we did back then, but it's a lot of things where you kind of like try it out from a te technical point of view to see what, what actually happens and does it work or does it not work? Because especially in the forums, you see people coming in saying that, like I have advice from, from a friend telling me to do this thing. And it's like, will it work or will it not work? Is it, is it risky or not? And if you always approach that from a theoretical point of view, where it's like, oh, Google says it's against the rules, and you never really try it out yourself, then you, you don't really know what, what is actually kind of, kind of like the case there. And also when they come and say, my competitor is doing this, and I would like to rank above them by doing something legitimate, do I have a chance? Or what, what should I be doing? Should I be copying them or not? Um, a little bit of understanding of what kind of like the, the problematic behavior actually affects in the search engines. I, I think that's, that's useful to have. Uh, but it, at the same time, it's also something where if, if you're trying things out for yourself and you're just playing around with, I don't know, setting up an affiliate site or kind of trying to learn how these things are, that's perfectly fine. Like at least from my point of view, it's like try, try some crazy stuff. Uh, but if you're working with people who have a legitimate business that would be on the line, then that's kind of the place where you'd say, well, you have to be serious when, when you're interacting with these people. You can't just put their business on the line uh, just because like you want to try something out or you saw something sneaky that actually works and Google didn't catch it immediately. So uh, you could theoretically try that out. It's nice to know that you've come from that experimental background yourself. You came from the dark side into Google. Um, but I think that's probably, I would assume that that's obviously helped you a great deal um, when you went to Google, because you've seen it, you, you know, you've worked there in the trenches, you've been on that practical side of it. But just going backwards, I just, sorry, just wanted to go back just to could talk a little bit more about the forums. Um, so and a creator site was obviously a very, very instrumental site in its day where it brought a lot of SEOs together. Um, what, what years were you active in there? Oh my gosh, I don't know. Um, do, you, do you think it was before? So it would have been, well, it started early 2000s, didn't it? And you joined Google at 2007. So it's obviously between, I suppose, between those times, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I'd have to guess like maybe 2005 to, I don't know, yeah. 2008, so, something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I thought it was a, a really good forum. And it's like one of the things that I really appreciated there is that it was just such a friendly atmosphere in terms of the, the people that were active there. Because oftentimes, at least at, at the time, the, the way that I remember it, there was also a lot of uh, arrogance around SEO in that you ask a kind of a beginner question. And then if you're in the wrong forum, it's like uh, people are really like, oh, you should know this. Like you put SEO on your website. Why are you asking me this basic question? And it felt like at Creator Site, uh, it, it was a lot more open and, and people were actively kind of like helping each other out. Uh, some, some of the people that, that are still active now in the SEO industry were, were active there as well. And uh, yeah, it, it felt, I don't know, it felt really friendly. It was also weirdly one of those places where I asked for advice on what to do in an interview at Google, uh, where I was like, I have no idea what, what kind of questions people will ask me at Google. We'll have to kind of like estimate how many ping pong balls fit into a bus or like these weird... <laughs> questions where 
you you kind of read about them online, but uh, you don't really know is, is this like actually a thing. Uh, but that that was kind of, kind of helpful, I think, kind of getting some input from some of those people uh, with regards to like potentially moving to Google or not. John, did Google ask you how many ping pong balls you can fit into a bus in your interview? <laughs> no, no, I did not get that question. Yeah, and yeah. It, it was weird because uh, so they, they flew me over to California for the interviews at the time. And on the way over, I, I thought I probably need to learn the webmaster guidelines. So I tried to learn them and I, I could not learn them all just like on a flight over. And for some reason, I kind of like understood the, the gist of them, but never really like uh, dug into them too much. But luckily they didn't come up in the interviews. Um, just, just going with the formats again. Do you think? I mean, how how important do you think uh, that they've been in the industry? Um, I mean, for me, I would perceive them as being, you know, a critical part of the development. And you know, could SEO have developed uh, as it did without forums? I I don't think so. So I mean, I I don't think that SEO could have developed as it is. So I I think they I agree they they were a critical part. Uh, in, in the industry because it's just kind of like sharing all of that information that that was really important. And I think that's also something that uh, Google noticed at, at some point early on in that people just have so many questions and Google can't answer them all. And people have so many unique situations with regards to their website and there's no generic answer that gives you everything. And uh, the forums are a great way for kind of the people who have these kinds of questions, especially those who aren't uh, kind of already that savvy with regards to SEO to ask these questions and other people kind of helping out. And at the same time, it kind of up levels everyone that's involved. So the people who are helping out see more interesting cases and they can kind of build their repository of uh, weird situations around SEO and the people who are reading can learn from that discussion as well. And I, I think that's something that really played a big role in making SEO kind of move from just being this weird black box thing to actually having a lot of practical and technical details that you can focus on and steps that you can look at and frameworks that you can use to understand does your content match what people are searching for all of those things yeah i mean it's interesting I mean, i'm i'm so old i remember a time before the internet um, before mobile phones um, you know when you actually had to go to a library if you wanted information and you had a phone book to try and look up numbers it's interesting to see now as well how social media has really taken over from forums to become the place of, of communication. Although, uh, yeah, they're just, it's sad that there seems to be quite a lot of negativity. I, I think kind, kind of like having, I don't, I don't know, yeah, all, all of that outrage on social media is, is definitely one thing. The other thing that is also tricky is uh, kind of the, the wrong information that you sometimes get on social yeah. media. Where, like, like you mentioned, in the past, you would go to a library, and you would read the official book, mm -hmm. and you would have the official answer. It might not be correct, but you would have kind of that official answer, and you can work from there. And nowadays, you look something up online, and depending on where you go, what you click on, it could be correct, it could be incorrect. And that, I, I think, on the one hand, makes it easier to find information, but you have to put a lot more work in to confirm that the information is actually correct. Yeah, I think we've, we've all probably been lulled into a false sense of security, the fact that in our pockets, you know, we carry, we carry out around this little machine that is just a portal to the world and all information at your fingertips. Whereas when I grew up, that was just unimaginable. But perhaps that has lulled us into a position where we've become too reliant and too trustworthy of that. So as you say, you know, you, you see something, and I know probably for a lot of people, the top search results you see, you're just clicking on those and you, you know, people probably aren't digging in as much as they can. Tell me a little bit about your software company and Soft Plus. You started that in 1995. Was that that was after you left you know, education, I presume, or did you start it while you were still um, I, studying? I, I think I started it 
slightly before or around the time when I started studying. Um, and I, I started it together with, with a, a teacher from high school. Uh, so we ended up making medical billing software for, for some of the, the areas here in Switzerland. And I don't know, at the time that worked really well. And yeah, let's see. I, I think kind of the, uh, the, the early days where, I mean, it's, it's kind of like weird run, running a business in parallel to, to your studies, but I don't know, I, I guess it just happens and you get used to it, but it, it all worked out, I, I think in the end. And really kind of the interesting part I, I noticed is that at some point I ended up getting kind of bored of kind of the, the business itself and the, the software and everything. Not, not in a bad sense, but it felt like it wasn't really that challenging anymore. And that's where I kind of like started doing more and more in, in the search or in the, the internet web, web area. Um, but you know, it was also, I, I think, tricky for me to kind of leave that company and go to Google because it's, it's uh, I, I don't know, I guess if, if you kind of build up the company on your own, you have a, a handful of employees and then taking that and saying, well, I'm going to go to another bigger company and leave you all. Uh, that's it's like a, a really tough uh, move to me. I, I feel like on, on a personal level, it's at, at some point you get comfortable doing something, which on, on the one hand is good because it's kind of a sign that you know what you're doing and yeah. you're, you're able to do it fairly well. Uh, but it's also sometimes fun to just do something that you're not that good at yet mm. and try to find a way to, to figure out if you can make it work. And yeah. it's, yeah, it's, it's always tricky, I think, but Quote, well, yeah, John Moogle at Google is faking it till he makes it. <laughs> I, I think I think that kind of applies. And like everything around the imposter syndrome, that that also plays, I, I think, a big role, at least for me, in that when, when you initially go to Google, it's like, oh, so many smart people. And it's like, what am I doing here? How did I kind of sneak through these interviews? And as you move around within Google, it, it doesn't really go away. It kind of keeps sticking with you because there are always more people there that are smarter than you or that you think are smarter than you. And it's That's kind of like that challenge between being frustrated that actually I'm, like, I'm, I'm not really that good, but at the same time, well, I can, I can try. And, and uh, the other people aren't doing anything magical either. Like they figured something out. So maybe I can figure it out too. Yeah, maybe I'm starting to come to the conclusion that I think an imposter syndrome will never go away. And actually, I think maybe imposter syndrome actually helps you be better because it just it keeps pushing you. It keeps pushing you to constantly evolve and learn and make sure you don't get too complacent. So, yeah, I was kind of waiting for that magical moment of thinking, yeah, I really know what I'm doing now, but maybe it's never coming. Yeah, um, I, I, I think the, the part that, that helped me there is to just recognize that it's, it's like a thing and it doesn't mean that like everything is, is lost essentially. It's kind of like uh, when, when I go to do a presentation at an event, it's like I'm, I'm super nervous beforehand. I'm like, what, what am I even doing here kind of thing? Uh, but at some point you realize, well, actually this happens every time. And it's almost like a part of the process. And it's when, when you can kind of accept that it's there, like you still understand, like actually it's like it's super annoying, you're nervous and everything, but it's not like the end of the world nervousness, then it makes things a little bit easier, at least for me. So how did you, what actually led you uh, to work for Google? Because as you say, you, you know, you had your software company, you were, you know, happy with your business. Um, how did you now, go? I, I, I think it was mostly because I started in the forums, doing more in the forums. And in particular, Google started their, I think the sitemaps or the webmaster forum around that time. And I, I spent way too much time, I guess, in, in the forums, helping people or trying to figure things out, or at least trying to help people. And uh, also since sitemaps had just come out around that time, I made, I think the, the first Windows based sitemaps generator, which would crawl your website and then generate a sitemap file for you. Um, 
it was mostly because like I, I knew how to make these, these programs and the SEO side interested me. So I thought I would just try that out kind of almost like a side project, uh, but with the official labeling of, of my company uh, kind of thing. And uh, I think that combination somehow got Google's attention. And at some point, I got an email from one of their recruiters asking, like, hey, do you want to come and visit us in Zurich? And the email went to some address that I wasn't actively monitoring. So I wasn't even actually sure how, how that finally actually reached me. But uh, it was. It was cool to see. And uh, at the time, Vanessa Fox was leading, I think, the sitemaps effort or everything around uh, Webmaster Tools. I forgot what, it, what the, the first names were. Uh, but uh, she, like, I, I reached out to her because I had some contact with her from, from the forums. And uh, we, we had a little bit of back and forth. And I met her in Zurich. And uh, from there, it, it just, I don't know, the, the process kind of clicked into place. And uh, the whole hiring process was super long. And I was uh, also kind of after getting an offer from Google, I was like, I, I need a lot of time to figure out what to do with my company. Uh, so it's, I, didn't, I don't know, probably about a year from when I first got contacted to actually starting at Google. Were Google quite supportive? I mean, obviously they knew you had a business. So were they supportive helping you with that transition? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least with, with regards to kind of giving me time to figure it out. Um, and it, it didn't feel like there, there were a lot of other people that are involved kind of within that initial group of people who were hired for that kind of communications with site owners. Um, so they, they were kind of patient. That was good. It's interesting to know that um, your, your job probably came from the fact that you gave so much to the forum communities. Because, yeah, I mean, one of the things that strikes me about you now is you are so incredibly generous with your time. And, you know, I've watched this over the last several years of how much you do give. You know, it's amazing how... Uh, how much time you put into being on Twitter and then also, you know, making yourself available to other people. I think, I think it's always tricky with regards to kind of being super approachable because then it's, it also means you have a lot of things that you say specifically to individual people, mm. which then the, the press sometimes takes out of oh, context. God, yeah, and yeah. then it's like, John says this or Google claims this and it's like, well, in that specific case, sure, but not, not for everyone. Yeah, it must be, uh, must be really frustrating that every little nuance of everything that you say is just dissected with an inch of its life. I can imagine, yeah, you have to be really careful of what you do say. Um, yeah. yeah, so I'm trying to think what, what I said earlier about um, quoting John on something. Sorry if I said that, John. <laughs> uh, when you went to, to Google, how did you find that transition? So from, you know, from being having so much autonomy and, you know, running your own show, et cetera, to then going and working in a large, large organization, was that quite a, a steep learning curve or a natural fit? I, I kind of expected it to be worse uh, than, than it actually was because it. At least in, in the beginning, I felt like, well, this big American corporation, and I would probably have lots of mayor, lots of managers who tell me what to do, kind of thing. And uh, in in practice, it was very, I don't, I don't know, almost organic in in the sense that you could figure out like which which direction you wanted to work on, and kind of work on it by yourself, which. I think is still still the case so to a large part, um, but that's kind of the the aspect that that I was like the most worried about that I would just be like some cog in the machine of this big mm. corporation, mm. and not really have any any say in anything at all, and because of that I also kept uh, a desk open at at my company at the time, for I think about a year 
uh, kind of like telling them it's like, well, you're like, I have no idea like if this will actually work out. And if it doesn't, I, I'd like to kind of like come back and join you guys again. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I think it, it kind of worked out. Yeah, I think, what is it, 14? Well, it's over 14, nearly 15 years. I think it's fair to say you probably made the right choice. Well, at least for the time. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know what what is what the future will bring. Like, who knows? But uh, at least at, at the time, mm. I, I think that worked out fairly well, and it's it's still working out fairly well. Yeah. You know? So, did they did they give you quite a lot of um, autonomy at Google? Did they give you a lot of room to uh, you know to work on projects and develop things, etc.? Yeah, I. I think one of the advantages that we had is that it was such a kind of an outsider team uh, that uh, nobody was really sure what they were supposed to be doing. And because of that, we could kind of like build a little bit out ourselves with regards to what to do. And uh, there are like obvious limitations with, with regards to legal things that we had to watch out for. And it's an American company, so like people are spread out a little bit more. Um, but for, for the most part, I, I think like people didn't really know what we were supposed to do and were kind of relying on us to say, this is what we should be doing. And uh, I, I had, I think, one manager in between who basically had no idea what I was doing and was just saying like, keep doing a good job. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, nothing is blowing up. It's like, must be good. Um, and uh, yeah, but uh, more and more as kind of the visibility of the stuff that we worked on uh, grew, then like people understood a little bit more what was actually happening. And uh, at some point, I think maybe a couple of years ago, we moved to the developer relations organization within Google, uh, which does a lot of things that are kind of similar, but not, not exactly the same in that they talk to developers about technology. Uh, so you could imagine like someone from the Android team talking with Android developers, telling them how to make Android apps kind of thing. And uh, for the large part, we felt like search is different because we're not talking with developers like these SEOs. Some of them do some coding. Some of them do uh, a lot of the non-coding things around SEO. Uh, but uh, I, I think the overall framework of having people talking to external folks who are working with our technologies, that's kind of simpler. And that ended up, I, I think, making it a lot easier for us to figure out what we should be doing and for the, the teams around us and the management side to understand, are they doing a good job or not? Um, I would imagine, so when you started there in 2007, it was probably quite a small company because you, obviously you're in Zurich. Did it feel like um, Zurich was kind of its own small standalone company in a way or did you very much feel part of a satellite part of a big company or I mean how many people were there working there when you started there in yeah. 2007? I, I think there are like in Zurich there are something like 200 people so it, it was a I don't know reasonably size uh, now I think it's a couple of thousand so it's, it's a lot bigger in Zurich um, but uh, I, I think the Overall, the aspect that uh, I saw the most was it was just so focused on, on Mountain View, California, and kind of the Pacific time zone area. And I think for, for the longest time, I was kind of like the only person in European time zones, kind of doing this kind of talking with people on the forums, helping them out, uh, kind of trying to figure out what we should be doing. And uh, that's something that, I don't know, in, in the beginning, it felt, it made it feel a little bit more like I was doing my own thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, it also meant like I had to figure out ways to deal with the time zone difference mm -hmm. and traveling to, to California more often. Mm -hmm. And especially in the early days, the, these kind of VC meetings, they, they would only be possible in the office for, I don't know, various reasons. And you'd stay in the office until late uh, to, to do meetings with, with people in California. 
but so. at, at least now it's it's something you you can do it at home like you don't have yeah. to go to the office to do a video call and uh, a lot of my team is now based in zurich or kind of similar time zones and that just makes it so much easier to kind of interact and plan and uh, figure things out do you yeah do you go over and work in california or did i mean did you at the beginning have to go over to california much um i i think i'm I, I mean, it's been a while, but uh, it, it, I do remember like going over a few times uh, to both to California and to Seattle, where the, I think the early sitemaps and webmaster tools teams were. And uh, yeah, it, it's always kind of meeting people in person is just so much different than yeah. if you're just interacting with them by email. Yeah. Nowadays, you, you can have these video calls kind of impromptu a little bit as well, but uh, at least at the time, just doing emails and compared that to actually meeting someone in person is just so different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it's, it's also changed a little bit. Like, I don't know, I'd say like the last five to 10 years in that it's a lot more um, kind of like real people that are involved in, in social media and in the forums where mm -hmm. in the early days it's like these weird yeah. uh, pseudonyms and avatars yeah. and like nobody wanted to be known by their actual name and kind of like migrating from this weird world where like someone is black knight and yeah. then you finally meet them in person you're like oh my god it's like a person not not a comic figure yeah. uh, it's, it's just, I don't know it's so fun uh, I, I think finding like-minded people is super important. And that's yeah. that's sometimes really hard, especially when, when you're active in this kind of niche area where essentially like all, all of the people around me, they they have like no idea what, what you're actually doing. Whereas if you're a farmer yeah. or if you're a baker, it's like, yeah. everyone understands, oh yeah, it's like, I like bread. And uh, kind of finding people who understand what what you're struggling with and can help you with that or or you can help them or just even recognizing that they're actually interested in the same kind of things that's that's super important i think that's one of the things that with the internet was i don't know it was a really cool thing kind of being able to go from being an outsider in some local environment to understanding well actually there are lots of outsiders in a similar way yeah. just globally spread out a little bit more yeah, I mean, just the very fact that like you could make a joke about 404 and people would know what you're talking about, whereas you see like with your family and friends, like what? We have exactly. no idea what you, we still have no idea what you do for a living. <laughs> yeah. um, so what was, um, how, I mean, how has like Google changed? What was it? So 2040, so like nearly 15 years is a long time. I mean, in tech, as we say, you know, the last, I think the last 10 years has changed radically. So like 15 years ago, what was Google, because it was a much smaller, I mean, it's obviously always been a big company, but it was much smaller. What was it like back then? How has it evolved? Yeah, I, I think, like I mentioned, it, it's something where it felt a lot more that people were just doing what they were interested in kind of, kind of at the time. And it feels that with kind of as it grew over the years, there's a lot more structure in terms of like, what, what does Google actually want to do? And uh, the, the other thing that I, I think I didn't really realize over the years that happened uh, so much is that there's just so many different parts of Google that you have no idea about. And uh, in, in the beginning, at least when I joined Google, it was like, well, everything is around search, obviously, because that's what Google is known for. Uh, but uh, everything around, um, I don't know, Google Docs, Workspace, kind of the G Suite or whatever they're called now. Uh, there's just so many people working on that. So many people working on Maps. Uh, so many people working on YouTube. Then everything around Google Cloud. And you, you don't really recognize that these areas are growing so much. Uh, because you're just like focusing on your small thing and you recognize like the people working on search are like familiar names that kind of keep bubbling up now and then. Uh, but you don't see how much is actually growing outside of your bubble uh, within Google. And that's something where I think when I look at the numbers of the, the employees at Google, it's like, oh my God, it's like 10 times bigger now or whatever it is. Um, it doesn't feel like it's that much bigger because 
you have your small bubble right, and it yeah, kind of yeah. remains the same. Yeah. And like these other bubbles, like if Maps is doing something super crazy and suddenly have lots of people, like you, you don't realize that's happening. You, you sometimes see some of those connections when you see the, the things that they're working on, but uh, it doesn't come across as the company is growing bigger because your bubble is kind of similar yeah. in size. See, when you first joined, did you say you were in Sitemaps team? Um, I, so I, I was initially, I think, hired as a Webmaster Trends Analyst, which again, like nobody really knew what to do, uh, but the Sitemaps team was in Zurich and I basically spent most of my time together with them uh, to, to kind of like see on, on the one hand, what, what they were working on with regards to sitemaps and also to bring kind of feedback from the ecosystem back to them. It's like, this is confusing or this doesn't work with indexing or crawling and we, we need to find some answers or ways to frame the, these kind of things. You, so now you're in the Google Search Console team, is that right? Um, no, the, the Search Console team is separate. Um, right. I'm, I'm technically a part of the, the search quality team now, okay. uh, but a lot of these changes, I, I think are more organizational and not necessarily things that change what we as, as a team kind of work on directly. Uh, so before the search quality team, we were part of the Chrome organization uh, because kind of like talking with people who make websites is something that people on, on the Chrome side do. Uh, and it's more that like organizationally that made sense at the time and now this makes sense and kind of these reorganizations, they happen from time to time. But for, for the most part, at least for our team, uh, the, the work that we do is, is very similar. It's, it's just, we, we kind of have a different structure above us. And that's something I think that comes with bigger companies, especially if you're a little bit of an outsider team. Um, but uh, I, I try not to let that worry me too much because like, who knows what the bosses and bosses and bosses above us will actually end up deciding. And as long as you can keep doing the same things or similar things, it's like, whatever. Do you, what do you see as the, the one most important um, change or implementation, that, uh, or implementation that's really changed search? I, I think kind of like when, when you sent me this question, I, I thought about it a little bit. And I think the, the thing that stood out to, to me the most was really kind of the, the subtle migration of everything around websites going from being this weird, quirky kind of technical thing where you had to structure your HTML yourself and make a server to becoming something more of an organized platform and in particular one that included SEO by default. So uh, essentially kind of going from a situation where you as, as an SEO or as a site owner had to check individual HTML pages to see if they work and uh, to see if they load, if the links work, if, if there's anything broken there with our regards to crawling or indexability to essentially being able to take any mainstream platform that makes websites and just using that and then kind of SEO just kind of falling into place by default. And I think part of that is due to, well, obviously the web becoming more and more popular and it's like random people wanting to put things on the web, uh, which I think is good for the web, uh, but also kind of the, the general mindset in the SEO industry that like you can take apart a lot of things and figure out what the technical details are. And once you understand those technical details, you can implement that yourself. You can put that into a framework and make, on, on the one hand, maybe 100 pages or maybe 100 websites kind of with the same technical foundation. And part of that, I think, also comes from a lot of the documentation and the tooling that we have from Google side as well, where we kind of try to give site owners a, a more technical understanding of what is actually happening in search. And this is how we crawl. This is how we index. These are the things that are problematic when it comes to indexing. These are the things that work well. And then anyone who's kind of a software engineer can take that advice and guidance and build that out into a, a platform where like basically any of the mainstream platforms nowadays, if you use them, 
you can spin up a website for free or almost free, and the SEO side of things will essentially be taken care of. For you. And I think that evolution of SEO going from something that you have to fix all the time to being something that, for the most part, you can depend on it just kind of being in place, I, I think that's super important. Um, it's also something that kind of spins up that myth of, is SEO dead? Uh, that comes up, I don't know, every year, or every half year, because it's like, oh, now everything is SEO by default. Therefore, SEOs are obsolete. And that's definitely not the case. And that's something that you see at conferences all the time, where people just have so many things to talk about when it comes to SEO. They're not talking about status codes anymore. You don't need to use tools to check if the status code is correct or if the HTML is good or not. Uh, you can essentially rely on that just working. And there's still so many other things that you can focus on with regards to SEO, uh, with regards to strategic things, with regards to technical things, with regards to your content. Uh, all of that, that all of that part kind of remains and kind of keeps evolving over time. Um, but at least that foundation of anyone going in who wants to create something for the web, they can do it without kind of having to worry that they get the SEO side of things com completely wrong. So when you say SEO, you're very much referring to technical SEO and the, the, the having the technical side right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I guess that's kind of my bias because I, I see the, the technical side a lot more. Yeah. And usually when it comes to, to issues that we get, uh, that people come to us or internally that they, they recognize on the web, they're, they're due to technical issues and kind of that technical aspect. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, the, the content side of things, I think that's going to become more and more important because mm -hmm. as the kind of foundation of a website is there, the differentiation will be a lot more on the strategy of how you're targeting the website and the content that you're creating, kind of the marketing around all of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that'll become a lot more, more important. And I see that sometimes also in, in the forums and in discussions on Twitter. Uh, where you see essentially absolute beginners who are like, well, I can make money online. I found this video, how to do it. And they create a whole website and they basically do everything reasonably okay from a technical point of view, but the, the challenges that they're facing are really from the quality of the content. Mm -hmm. And uh, that I, I think is a good sign because it means like the, the quality of the content is really that part that's moving the web forward now. And, Hopefully, that means the quality of the content will improve over time. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, it's an amazing industry. I, I, I'm sure you must love it as much as I do because I know you're so heavily involved in it. And I don't think you can give that much time to something unless you're really passionate about it, right? Um, yeah. No, it's 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 super fun, and I think. What, what is also really good is that the, the people involved are just so, so good for the large mm. part. Mm. And I, I think what keeps me excited is kind of constantly seeing new faces in the industry as well. Mm -hmm. um, like obviously seeing the, the old faces kind of like hold up and keep doing new things, that's also exciting. Mm. But just, just seeing a new generation of people every couple of years, when you uh, look at a conference lineup, and you're like, I, I don't know any of these yeah, people. Yeah. And you look at the topics and like, these are good topics. Or sometimes you look at the topics and you say, well, these are the same topics we had 10 years ago, but it's, it's like a new point of view that, that kind of comes into play there. And that I, I think is really interesting. And that's also, I, I think one of the reasons I try to be so patient with regards to things like the office hours, where there, there's just so many beginners out there who like, so do I need to use a keywords meta tag or not? And uh, kind of seeing these kind of, I don't know, almost like basic questions over and over just shows that there's just like constantly new people coming in. And it's really not that SEO is a stagnant area where like nobody's doing anything new anymore. It's like they're constantly new people joining in. And yeah. that just, I don't know, tells me a little bit that it's still kind of relevant. Whereas if I were selling fax machines or something like that, then like there's <laughs> nobody new who's buying fax machines, like just all these old people, uh, that would be kind of like, well, I don't know if I'm still doing something useful here or not. 
Uh, but with SEO, it, it still feels like there's there's just so many new people keep jumping in, and they they bring their own experiences, their own backgrounds. Uh, they come with a mindset that they've had a mobile phone since the beginning, and that's just so different from what mm -hmm. I don't know. We yeah. grew up as. I think it's it's always a a bit tricky because you you have your kind of your own biases that that mm -hmm. are involved there, mm -hmm. and you like when when i noticed this like this was my my kind of background at that time and uh, people who run into it now they they have a completely different background but uh, that's yeah i don't know it for, from my point of view it just makes sense to keep answering these kinds of questions because people like need need some answers and they need something where they can kind of trust that it's okay and like obviously you shouldn't just blindly trust anything that Google says, but it's something where if you understand a little bit where it's coming from or if someone explains it to you in a way that you can kind of uh, follow up with, then I think that helps a little bit too. Actually, what, um, what questions do you see the most coming up? Do you is there any trend of that you see more than others? Um, How many I links do I need? <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean the the links questions come come up regularly. Also with regards to like how should I build links, uh, because <laughs> it, it's one of those things where if you look at look online, you'll see all of these people saying, "Oh, you should buy links, or you should do this, or guest posts, or anything like that." And you ask Google, and it's basically like, "Oh, you should not do anything. It should just magically happen." And somewhere in between there, there has to be a balance. And as a newcomer, you basically just see those two extremes. So that's something where I, I feel it's obvious that they, they would come to, to us mm. with questions like that as well. But I, I don't really have any particular question where I'd say, this one comes up all the time. Sometimes there are themes that have come up more often, sometimes less often internationalization is kind of like one of those tricky topics that comes up from variety of, of different levels of folks or pagination or uh, e-commerce sites how you should kind of split up products or kind of like combine products into a single page which a lot of that is a lot more about almost like a strategic approach of like how should you make a website should you focus on something and make it really good or should you create kind of this broad set of content mm. and like you can do it either way and like you can make either of those approaches work but you kind of have to do it in, in a purposeful way mm. not just kind of like stumble into it I think. yeah yeah um it is such a fascinating industry. It just I don't think there's ever two two days the same. Um, I'm just looking at the clock. I'm aware we've been talking for a long time now, and um, probably should just start to wrap up now. It's and I could talk to you all day, John. It has just been fantastic, fascinating listening to you. Um, I think just probably throwing one last question of um, for you. Obviously, not something. Uh, not as a, a Google uh, spokesperson, but for you, what do you think has been the best part of the SEO industry over the last 20 years that you've experienced? Um, I, I think one of the things that, that has really stood out is kind of the, the move towards diversity in, in SEO overall. Uh, that's something where I, I see some, some of the efforts from the Women in Tech SEO group, for example, uh, come into play where it's really a lot more of, well, actually we're creating content for the whole world. And that means we should kind of have a re representative sample of the whole world that are active on doing that. And in, in the past, it felt a lot more like it's, it's very technical focused and there are lots of men kind of creating these, these technical guidelines and the whole industry is men. And if you go to a conference, all of the panels are just men and kind of that move towards purposely kind of creating a more diverse environment. I, I think that's something that really stood out. I'm, I'm really happy to see that. And yeah, I, I think that's, that's also super important for, for the SEO industry overall. Uh, to just be a lot more conscious that like just because you've worked together with a set of people over a couple of years 
doesn't mean that's everyone that's that should be involved in, in kind of this effort. And uh, sometimes going from just working with the people that you're used to working to purposely going out and kind of extra working with people that, that you haven't worked with before, uh, be, be that women or from other countries, other languages, um, that's something that I, I think is super important and uh, something I'm, I'm really happy to see that's, that's kind of happened in the SEO world. It's good to push yourself to constantly um, be around different people. I think I listened to something recently and I'm trying to think, I think it was Mark Zuckerberg, I'm not sure, who said that he had a challenge where his challenge was to talk to or meet a new person every day. I think in a year, it was like a personal challenge he had. I thought that's, that's kind of quite interesting. Yeah, I, I think it's also something that, that kind of came up over the years within Google as well, kind of the uh, whole also unconscious bias trainings that, that we <laughs> do where we, we kind of recognize that we have these weird biases that we don't actually kind of recognize otherwise. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then once you can recognize that they're in place, you can kind of go out and say, well, I want to kind of break that out and make sure that I don't have those biases mm -hmm. or not as much. And I think that's, that's like super challenging sometimes because you, you can go for years and kind of like stay within your own bubble. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's comfortable because you know, those people, they're, they kind of like you, mm. um, but kind of going from there to making sure that anyone can do similar things. I, I think that's super important and mm. it's, it's really hard sometimes. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I could obviously carry on talking for, for another several hours. So I'm, I'm going to wind down and wrap up that, John, because I could quite easily just go on and on. But it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. And uh, thank you so much for telling your story. And um, yeah, thank you for your generosity in the industry. Good to speak to you.